Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the shed. I'm Lonnie. It is Tuesday, and uh, today is my no shipping day, so I'm not going to be pulling orders today. Tuesdays and Thursdays, no order pulling. Um, today, my focus is going to be on getting this video up, listing stuff, and also going to be recording a podcast tonight with John Cincinnati Picker, and I think we're going to have a, a guest for the first time ever on that podcast, too. Uh, so that ought to be interesting. Uh, the stuff I'm listing, this is the stuff I got from the private pick that I haven't listed yet. This stuff here, I've got some stuff in here, and this hat. And this lamp I bought another day. Uh, oh, and this bear too, this smoky bear. Um, he does have a pole string. That doesn't function i think he may also be missing a hat too so that's going to be an as is kind of situation i have um i have listed a lot of the stuff that i bought i know it looks like i haven't listed much based on what's not listed but i've actually listed out of the 1400 dollar buy i've listed 59 items no 60 now 60 items for three thousand five hundred and thirty dollars so that pick was really good that's and that's not including the stuff that that i haven't listed yet so probably going to end up close to four thousand dollars i would imagine off of that uh off of that buy and uh oh um i received this package yesterday let me open it up i know what it is it's from a uh, pamela l let me open it up real quick so these are um i think it's 40. they look 20 and 20. I have 40 um, USPS padded flat rate envelopes here from Pamela. She said, sell those jeans. And that's right, Pamela, I need to. I need to get those things listed. Uh, I've actually sold probably close to half of the 49 that I've listed so far. And then I got all this other inventory and I stopped listing them. Uh, also, because I only have, I've got like, two of those left and then i'm not receiving the, any but i i also do have i don't know some of these these legal um legal flat rates and those legal flat rates actually the sizes of jeans i have they actually fit so um I'm, i have been able to ship using those but getting 40 of these is awesome i might actually after I list this stuff today, I might, before I start listing Hot Wheels, I might go ahead and start listing some jeans. Um, you know, at least maybe 50 pair or so, and then go back to the Hot Wheels. And then I have to figure out what I'm gonna do with those, uh, all those Beanie Babies. I know y'all can't wait to see how that goes. <laughs> but anyway, thank you very much, Pamela. That was extremely thoughtful. And I do appreciate it. Um, and no, this is not a call out for anybody else to send me bubble mailers. Um, I did order like 200 of those legal flat rates too. So I think hopefully those will come. And I have a little bit of time because I have other stuff I need to list. But Pamela, this lets me list 50 jeans or so also. Because uh, the thing is, this is a great time to sell jeans. Uh, back to school, fall coming, blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah. So anyway, thanks again, Pamela. That was very thoughtful of you. I appreciate it. And this is what I've been doing on Netflix the past few days, Last Dance. I know most of y'all that have wanted to see it have already seen it because it's been out for a few months. But uh, yeah, this thing is awesome. Like I always knew Michael Jordan was the best, in my opinion anyways. But just listening to, listening to the amount of drive he has to win, like winning, it's the only thing that matters to that guy. The only thing. And he doesn't care. He puts winning above people, stuff, everything else. Nothing matters more than winning. <laughs> and uh, this has been pretty fascinating to watch. Like, is, and I guess a lot of people, I think, probably wonder is the winning worth it? To him, he says yes. But the win at any cost mentality I guess maybe sometimes that's what it takes and not everybody has it in them of course in his case um, he had that drive that win at all cost mentality 
and he had the talent and the physical prowess to get it done. I mean, like, this, that blend of things, like, is very, very, very rare. So, yeah, this is a really good documentary, though. It started off a little slow, but these last few have been amazing. Um, I like the Dennis Rodman parts, too. So, I recommend it. Like I said, most of y'all have probably seen it that want to see it. This is one of the boxes that I bought during that pick. And this has the Snoopy whoop, Snoopy cookie jar. It actually says Snoopy cookie jar down here. And I am going to go ahead and open it. This is from 1973. June 18th, 1973. And um, yeah, I'm about to remove a couple of staples here. And uh, take a look. This is on the bottom. I'll be right back. I'm going to straighten the staples out with the... Uh, one side of each staple with my needle nose here there's a few reasons to open this before i sell it number one what does the cookie jar look like number two whenever i shake it a little bit i feel some movement in there and i would not want to ship it with any movement so i would want to pad the inside of this box anyways uh, i don't feel like i don't feel like any movement in there is going to be good for shipping so um uh, I did take photos before I'm doing this with the staples. Not that, like, honestly, like, I, I think I could actually probably put these staples back in. And no one would be the wiser, really. I mean, how can you tell? But this one not really straight enough there we go all right got it I'm out let's take a look well I could smell that 43 year old or no no it's older than that 47 year old air in here okay mating USA don't break it now all right here's the base And here is the top. Hopefully this thing is in good condition. Because even though, uh-oh, it's not perfect. Look, there's some paint. I was kind of worried about that. There's some paint missing right here on the lid. So another good reason to open this thing up. So there's also a little bit of dust. It's not like great. In my in my opinion, it's not like fantastic quality anyways. But yeah, that's it. That's the uh, Snoopy cookie jar. And when I put it back in, I'll put it back in with some bubble wrap. So, but I will be able to, I'm gonna call it new open box, never used. And then I'll have to disclose this. Now, uh, if somebody, somebody wants to touch that up, that'd be an easy touch up, I think. But yeah, that's it. I, I don't even know what I'm going to list it for yet. I haven't looked at comps. All right, I'm moving right along. I've actually listed pretty good bit today. Not too bad. Uh, the biggest things I listed were... I listed two of these Garfield telephones. Where are they at? Oh, there's one here. And there's one here. One is brand new. Uh, it's actually brand new in the box like it you could see the styrofoam has never come apart the other one is used so i went i'm kind of shooting for the moon on the new one because i couldn't find one that was like that uh 200 bucks and the other one i priced at 100 and 110 i think and then uh yeah this some other they had some very unique stuff at, at that sale uh this swimming sculpture for olympic commemorative telephone from 1984 i listed that and i have another one right here and then i listed some other stuff and the last thing i'm going to do before i answer a few questions i have this this coca-cola shirt and i'm at a loss i haven't been able to find this exact one anywhere especially not sealed in the baggie like this so i think i'm just gonna have to run it at auction and the weird thing about this shirt, it kind of looks like 
it kind of looks like that style from the 80s you know the thick rugby shirt that everybody had i have one <laughs> that really thick cotton rugby style but this is it kind of sort of looks like that but it's actually thin t-shirt thickness type material inside so it's not that real heavy kind of rugby shirt so i don't know what the heck you do with it so i give up i couldn't find it also this thing or right here this is screen printed on and a lot of the other shirts i've seen this is a patch and a lot of times that's embroidered so i have not found this exact same shirt i don't know how old it is i don't know nothing because i haven't seen it so i'm just going to throw it up at auction and say what i do know which is not not much <laughs> Okay, I've got the auction all set to go. Coca-Cola shirt. Simple pictures, because it's just in the plastic, so there's not really a lot to do there. But I'll read the description to y'all. This shirt is brand new and plastic is shown. The material on this shirt is not the thick co cotton that the rugby style shirts of the 80s have. The thickness of the material is more like a t-shirt. The Coca-Cola spell out on the front is not an embroidered patch, but is screen printed on the white color block was unable to find another example of this exact shirt very unique coca-cola collectible i think it is probably long sleeve but i am not sure <laughs> so i tried to tell them everything i knew about the shirt and there it is so starting her at 99 cents and letting it rip wish me luck all right let's do a few questions i just pulled up a few right here uh just for fun so ivy bell lane asked how do you get the picture insert information that you show when something sells? It shows the picture list date, sale date, duration, and amount sold with shipping. Uh, not to sound like an advertisement, <laughs> but it might. I, I really like this app though. It's called, I don't know if they have it on Android or not, completely. It's this app right here. And um, yeah, I, I put both of my stores in here mean pc and garage flips and i put a few people that i spy on like uh thrift mine and there's john there's uh justin's two stores and yeah let's look at justin's store what you been selling justin oh justin just sold something it looks like three minutes ago he sold a leadberry men's long sleeve dress shirt for 20 bucks and he sold some jeans some clinique some more jeans 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 Clinique jeans, jeans, jeans. <laughs> and then, yeah. And I can look, I could tell like at a glance what I've sold. And it makes it real easy for me to pull listings um, for these videos. And here's a pair of jeans I sold. And I'll just screenshot it. Bam. So it costs some amount of money. I think it was somewhere around five bucks or something. One time purchase. Uh, Relaxed Galaxy. With your eBay store, do you make enough annually to go on vacation every year? And can you buy a mansion by now? Uh, can't buy a mansion. I guess it depends on how you define a mansion. But yeah, we go on vacation every year. Of course, I do more than uh, just eBay. I do YouTube and uh, I sell box knives. <laughs> and I do a lot of eBay. But yeah, I think if I just focused on eBay, sure. I think you can make a good living if you work really hard and you're you know have a decent supply of inventory i think you can make a very good living um we this year we had to cancel our vacation but yeah we go on some type of pretty good vacation every year i have you know i have been on a few trips uh like we went to the highway 120 i went to the highway 127 sale last week but uh yeah you definitely can make a decent living or um it can be a big struggle like i remember when i first started it was a huge struggle so it's possible it's also possible to be a reseller and uh not make much money at all just depends you know uh mr sean do you do the ebay promoted listing i've done several at just one to three percent and notice some sales from it i promote everything i list at one percent every time and my thinking there is i'll get a bump above people that don't promote at all does it work i'm not sure but i do it and a lot of times probably my listings um uh, especially with viewer sales they're probably not clicking on the promoted listings they're probably clicking right into my store from the link in the description and so that those aren't going through promoted listings but yeah uh, 
I don't know how effective they are to be honest. Uh, Rich Fry, what percentage of your sales are to viewers viewers these days? Depends on the day, um, and it depends a lot on what I'm selling at the moment. If I'm selling like a lot of pops or something like that, maybe I'll have more. Um, I'm pulling up my main store, mean PC store right now, and I'm going to take a look. I have 16 items awaiting shipment there. And I know, yeah, he's a, that's a viewer, even though he didn't leave a note. One, two, three. Uh, four, five. So five sales that I have right now, five out of 16. Five are going to viewers, 11 are going to non-viewers. So some days it's more. Some days it's less. I would say 40%. I'm guessing though, because I haven't been tracking it. I don't know. I don't know for sure. Um, Kate said, Lonnie, did you not film at the 170 sale waiting for the videos? I did actually film, Kate. Here's the issue that I've had. At the 170 sale, I did film and I've got memory cards somewhere. <laughs> uh, I can find them, I'm sure, I hope. I've got memory cards. Oh, I think they're, no? Hmm, I've got, I can find them. I know I can. I've got memory cards from the 170 sale. I just have not had a chance to edit videos yet. As soon as I got back, I was make. I made like some really big buys last week. Last week I spent like four grand. I spent like $5,600 last week. So I figured I can wait a week or two to edit video and mess around with that. Um, I need to get stuff listed and sold right now uh, after putting out that kind of expenditure. And on top of that, I have the knife, uh, the, the box resizer sales are going on. So. Uh, my plate is kind of full. I do have a lot of video from that that I will be uploading on Garage Flip's channel, though. It's coming. Uh, Madeline Cross says, Maybe your daughter wants to make some extra college cash by helping dad with listings. Um, so, Madeline, I don't, I don't think she's interested in doing that so much. But what I have been having her do is with the box resizers that I've been selling, she takes... I get these printed, I have a local printer I use, get these done. These are actually kind of pricey. They're nice vinyl stickers. Um, they're a little over 30 cents a pop for each sticker, which is, that's pretty pricey. This is over $300 right here. <laughs> but um, she takes these, I give her like the boxes of knives and then she sticks a sticker. She cuts these open, sticks a sticker on the knife, puts it back in and i pay her 25 cents a piece for that that's all i have her doing for me right now but that is that i mean it sounds like a small thing but it's actually like a huge help for me it makes things a lot faster uh and it's a nice way for her to make money i kind of figured it out and i figured um i figured she could probably make about 15 dollars an hour doing that without like really busting her tail too hard and um, this time I have 1,440 of them. Uh, so she's been working through. She doesn't need a whole lot of money. And uh, she's going to be leaving for college pretty soon. So, yeah, it, it's working out pretty good, though. But she's not going to be here pretty soon. I'm going to be stuck doing that myself unless I can get my younger daughter to do it, which I might be able to do. Uh, Jason Acton, just curious as to how many returns you process a year. Are many your fault or are most just buyer mistakes? Thanks. Uh, without looking, I have looked before in the past. It's typically under a percent. And I would say pretty good many of them are my fault. I don't know. Uh, they're, they're just so, so few and far between. I, I had one the other day, as a matter of fact, um, which I haven't had one lately. 
This thing right here, this Craftsman bagger attachment, I sold that for $38 to a guy. And he got it, and then a couple days later, opened to return. Size, because of size, doesn't fit. And I accepted the return, he got back here. Uh, I think he paid about, 50, it's pretty close, like in Texas. He paid like $15 for shipping, and then he paid to ship it back and I refunded the purchase price. I didn't refund the shipping or anything. On stuff like that, I don't offer free returns. I do not. Uh, he just ordered the wrong one. I've had a few car park type things come back, probably because they ordered the wrong one again. Uh, but for the most part, I get very, very few returns. Occasionally I have something get damaged, but that's not a return. That's gonna be like an insurance claim or it, you know, I eat it kind of situation. So uh, returns are not a significant source of uh, pain for me. <laughs> uh, and last one, Lightning Spark 124. Quick question, a buyer asked me to ship out their item using a regional flat rate box A. What's the difference between a USPS regional flat rate A versus a USPS priority mail medium flat rate box? Okay, I've got some. So I've got some. What is this? No, that's not it. Okay, this is a medium flat rate box. Whatever you put in this thing will ship anywhere in the country for I somewhere around 13 bucks. I can't remember for sure. Some approximately $13. The now these come in different like different configurations but this is the longer version there's another one that's that looks more like the medium flat rate but it's a little smaller than the medium flat rate and this is a regional a box now anything you could fit in this box as long as it doesn't weigh over 15 pounds ships to its ships to its destination as if it weighed two pounds so if it cost it could cost anywhere from 750 to i'm guessing again 750 to 11 dollars depending on what zone it's going to and again those are guesses so don't don't hold me hold me to the fire on that um it's it's not really a flat rate but it I don't know. I don't know what you call that exactly, but it is uh, it is a good deal a lot of times. So it's almost always going to be cheaper. It's always going to be cheaper than a medium flat rate box. Uh, so if you can fit it in a regional A, then it's a good deal if it's over two pounds. If it's two pounds or less, you just might as well use a regular box. So hope that helps. I think I've got a video a while back talking about regional boxes. So that's going to be it for today, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh, don't forget, uh, podcast will be up tomorrow afternoon. So catch that link down below. Bye, y'all.